Hello, I'm New Center Maine meteorologist Jason Nappy tracking the nor'easter headed our way as we get into the upcoming couple of days. Yeah, it's coming. We'll break it down. What I know, what I don't know. Get right to it here. Heavy snow inland. That's the best probability of right now. The coast still undecided on that. Rain, ice, wind, all that still coming. From Tuesday late into Friday early. That is what I know about the timeline of this one. What I don't know and what is crucial is the storm track. Is it a coastal hugger? Is it down towards the benchmark over towards Cape Cod? How much is it going to mix and snow amounts? Don't have that ironed out just yet. Hopefully the next 24 hours start to fine tune that. Here comes the storm here. Isobars, pressure, lines equal pressure in the atmosphere as this midweek nor'easter is going to start to bomb out, intensify rapidly. 24 millibar drop or more in about 24 hours or less. And that'll be moving in once again later Tuesday into Wednesday. Simply put, what is a nor'easter? It is a storm. It is going to have winds from the northeast. It could be rain or snow or both. It could have strong gusty winds. But most people around here consider strong gusty winds a northeast wind. That's a pretty bona fide nor'easter. Now, as far as the nor'easter types go, we've got Miller A's and Miller B's. So two dominant types as far as that goes. High pressure up north here in the Miller A track is going to develop here right down the Gulf of Mexico and swing up the eastern seaboard for Miller A. It will intensify rapidly and move up the coastline. The mid-Atlantic, New England usually get hit the hardest from that type of track here coming up from the south. And it can be icy heading back in the eastern side there of the Appalachian Mountains over towards the I-95 corridor with rain down here in the southeast coastline. Then we go over to, well, think about Super Swimmer 93, the big one. That was a Miller A. Now let's talk about Miller B's because that's the one that's coming for us as we get to the middle of the week. We're going to have low pressure, which is going to really develop here towards the Midwest. It's going to start in California right now and eventually get to the Midwest. And as it does push over to the Appalachian Mountains, it's going to fall apart and then redevelop more like over here towards kind of uh, Delmarva. And as it does so, it's going to head up the coast here a bit and it's going to start to bomb out when it gets that warm Gulf Stream uh, moisture coming in from the south. It gets here off the coast of Cape Cod. Now, if it gets in the Gulf of Maine, it's really game on. But an example of this storm would be back towards February 5th to 6th of 2010, the North American blizzard then. Here's the setup for this storm coming this week. Low pressure here coming off Cape Cod, getting in the Gulf of Maine. Now, how long is it going to be in the Gulf of Maine will decide a lot, but you can see tightly packed isobars. That's going to mean wind. And as far as the future snowfall, I won't put numbers on just yet, but I can tell you there is the probability. There is the opportunity here for a bunch. Most of it, the brighter colors are going to be inland, depending on that storm track. Extremely crucial. The problem here is going to be power outages. OK, talk about wind Wednesday night into Thursday, starting to ramp up 30, 40 miles an hour most likely along the coastline, especially you put heavy, wet snow on limbs, not really so much ice this time, but 50 mile an hour wind in Bar Harbor. That's a problem when heavy, wet snow. So here's the storm. Big hit of energy coming into the Pacific off the ocean there. Another energy kind of lobe drops in from the north. That's the cold and the moist. It's going to consolidate off the coast here. It's called phasing energy merges together to boost the storm. We'll go a little closer now and show you this forming in the Gulf of Maine. There it is, and that's what you need. You need the pressure to drop. You need the heavy snow to pull the cold air down. The storm makes its own cold air essentially in the Gulf of Maine with that track. However, April 3rd this is what the radar could look like starting off as a bit of rain 38 in Portland, but as the storm strengthens and gets stronger as far as pressure dropping, and the heavy snow brings the cold air down. Also, if it happens around midnight, 2, 3 in the morning. That's a lot better for an April storm if you do want snow. Less, obviously, in the way of the sun angle. But we'll have to see here. Where is that rain-snow mixed line start to dance? Depending on, you know, you're talking about during the daytime as we get to Thursday. You got to obviously have a very high sun angle in April. So we'll see. Here's my other concern, a little wild card. We've got fluffy snow, normal snow and wet snow. Well, with this one, we're at least to normal, if not over to wet. Now that's closer to a 10 to 1 or 5 to 1 ratio. So think about 12 and a half pounds per square feet if you're talking about the wet snow. 
So let's go ahead and stack some cars or some pickup trucks. So fluffy snow, that's one pickup truck, okay? 6,000 pounds or so. A couple pickup trucks, maybe a car, you know, and an F-150. And then we'll go here. How about three or four or five F-150s? 18,000 pounds or more. Most roofs can withstand 20 pounds per square feet, or square foot, I should say. How about this one? That's a lot on the roof. So you gotta really watch out with this. We just had a big storm come through. Once we start adding here this five to one ratio, we're talking about 37,000 pounds here if you get 24 inches of snow. I'm not saying we get 24 inches of snow, but there is an opportunity for a bunch of snow to come down with this storm, and it would be very heavy and wet right into that 33 degree, 32 line. More updates coming up in the next couple of days. I thank you so much for watching.